everyone, and welcome to Photo Brew, your source for DIY on a dime. I'm your host, Shane Roos, and on this episode, we're going to talk about background replacement in Photoshop. A couple weeks ago, I shot Christian rock superstar Matt Papa, and uh, before I went in, the client told me I had around an hour to shoot, uh, including setup, and when I got there, I was informed that I would only have about 30 minutes, including setup. Changed the whole game plan different setup, different lighting. Uh, so what I did, uh, I went in and I actually, you know, knocked out all the background lighting, just decided I'm going to go with what comes off, you know, the main lights to fill the background in. And, and later I would just do some, some background replacement to save time and money. And in the end, uh, I was lucky I did that because once I got set up, I really had uh, five to eight minutes. And from there, uh, I got, I think five or six shots fired off and then we were done and that was it. So um, when you're in a tight situation like that, um, you, you might want to rely on things that you can fix in Photoshop and just let them go. I hate doing that. You know, I like getting things right in camera, but some of the time you're not going to be able to do it. So let's go ahead and jump right into Photoshop and I can show you what I'm talking about. So these are, these are the finished images and you can see just shot real clean lighting, just really bright. I didn't really want to do anything fine art with it because, you know, he, he's got enough of that. So um, you can see the background is really crisp and clean and uh, there's good separation. To start with that, to get good separation, you need to worry about your lighting. And I'm not going to go into that uh, on this episode, but uh, lighting plays a part in being able to get a good separation of your subject and background. And if I hadn't lit him the way that I did, uh, it would have made my job a lot harder. So let's go ahead and get into Photoshop and see what we can do. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the raw file. Oh yeah. Uh, you can see there's a hard shell on the ground, but, but for the most part, without having the background lit separately, which would have added, you know, 15 or so minutes onto my time, uh, it's pretty well shadowless, you know, um, I would have liked to have him further from the backdrop. Uh, as you can see, um, some of the crinkles in the backdrop are still in focus. And that's because the room they let me shoot in was probably about six foot by four foot. So I really didn't have the room that I, I would have liked to pull this off. So like I said, sometimes you have to work around it and uh, fix things in Photoshop. And like I said, I don't really like relying on that. But um, that's just sometimes how it is. So what are you going to do? Now I urge you to get your beer out on these next few steps and uh, start drinking and follow along. All right, so we're just gonna do some basic color correction here. I'm gonna make sure my highlights aren't blown out make sure I've got details in my blacks. Just make sure everything looks good. All right, and from here, the first thing you're gonna want to start doing is of course cutting the background out. And you can do that one of two ways. I like to uh, control uh, or command J and copy the layer. Go ahead and get rid of my background layer and you can just come in here first thing and just start getting rid of all this mess that you don't need. And like I said, you, you can do it your way. What I like doing is going ahead and just getting all the bulk out of the way so I can just worry about him. And like I said, I left some of that shadow in there in case I wanted to do a comp later on. That would have been one less fake shadow. And then we can crop our image down. And then basically go in. I start with the magnetic tool brush. Get in there with actual pixels. I mean, really get in there. Your eyes are going to hurt. And just start taking this out like this. And a lot of times what I'll do so I don't mess up, I won't do the whole image at once. I'll just do what my screen shows me and then whip on out, double click to close it up. And what I like to do here is feather, and it really depends on your megapixels. Uh, I'm working with the 5D Mark II, which I think is 22 meg, something like that. Uh, so I do 0.5. You could do less if you're working with a smaller camera. It just gives it a nice realistic feather so you don't get that uh, fake Gaussian blur looking feather around your, uh, around your subject. Go ahead and get you another section and pop all that out. This is when you really want to take your time though and get the exact edges mapped off. 
when you're doing hair, select the polygon lasso and just select around, but keep all the hair in there, but just select around the majority of the hair. And I'm going to show you how to get a realistic so you don't get the uh, feathering and the banding around the hair when you, uh, when you do this. All right. So we've got Matt Papa cut out of the backdrop. We've left the shadow down at the bottom, as you can see here. And like I said, that's going to make it easier if you want a realistic looking shadow comped in later. Um, but spend time with the details because that's what's going to separate, you know, good work from bad work. And we went ahead and around the headpiece, I went ahead and feathered about 15 pixels and that's going to help you out with uh, with your final comp. So, all right, so let's work on the background. We're going to get a new layer. We're going to call that layer background. And we're going to fill that layer with a uh, white, but see, here's, here's the mistake too. You don't want bright white cause then there's no detail in there. What I like to do is first off, I'll pull a color. Let's say let's pull the color off this red right here. So that's the red in his jacket. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull it over to my whites, bring it down a bit into the gray and then maybe shift it. Not, not too much. Maybe like just barely. And you can use your arrow to correct just barely. So there's a hint of red in there. You see what I'm saying? All right. And then you feel that. And now what you've got is a nice clean background and there's a slight tint of red in there. It's, it's not going to be noticeable to most people, but you know, what's there. And that's what I like to do. Play with your mind. There's our original. There's our new background. And then there's our Matt Papa and where you feathered the hair selection, you can see that it, it blends into our backdrop. So it looks a lot natural than if you try to go in there and cut every little hair out. Now, one thing that might help you, uh, since you're working with such a light background color is take your main, uh, Matt Papa, your main layer and hit multiply. Now that's going to drop all that white that was around his hair into the same color as the background. Now, what you might also get in there is, is some of your highlights die down because it's actually going to fill the background color inside of his face and you know, everything that's multiplied. So what I like to do there is duplicate the backdrop and then go in with my selection tool and just select, you know, key areas that I want to bring attention to, which would be his face, his chest. You know, I'm not really too worried about the feet or anything like that. So we feather that. We're going to go feather, uh, with my size, do 185. You're probably going to do between 75 and 185. Um, and then we'll, we'll delete that. And you can see the face and all the places that we deleted have that lighter gray underneath it. You see what I'm saying? And the darker gray, fills in the shoes, the pants, the hands. And what it does is subtly draws your eye to his face and his chest and stuff like that. So, uh, just showing you, here's the original backdrop, bright white, you know, I, I think it could be better. So then what you do is when you add the darker gray in, it brings the backdrop in, it kind of levels, it kind of flattens out his pants and stuff, but then keep his, his face where we deleted off this layer, his face, has a good pop and a good contrast as well as his jacket. I just think that's a really subtle way to bring people's eyes to his face and, and, and really sell the image. Who says you got to listen to me, right? Who says you got to listen to me? All right. That was crazy. All right. So it's really late and it's been a crazy, crazy day. I know last week's photo brew didn't come out. We've been really busy in the studio. We've got a new movie we're getting ready to film. Uh, we've got a lot of things going on that we're trying to get out for you guys. We've got a lot of free things that we're doing. We've got some Photoshop actions coming out, so check the blog on that. We also have new downloadable presets for After Effects that we're going to offer for you guys. So stick with us. We're working on it. And join us next week when we pull out our long lens.